welcome to the Retro Cellar, where in today's episode, we will be covering the Super Console X. So, there are a plethora of versions of this system out there. The one that I got is the basic one. It's a 64-bit system that runs the S905 chip. But also out there, and this is where this can get very confusing, there is a Super Console X Pro, a Super Console X Cube, Super Console X Stick, X Pro Plus, X Max, X Pro Mas Max, and they're running anywhere from $50 to $200 or more. So the chips that they run, which is what some of the differences between each system, Besides the S905, or the S905W, the S905L, S905D, S905X, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and who knows, there's probably more out there. What I've noticed as I've uh, done some research on it is that the difference between one system to the next uh, and one chip to the next is very negligible. Um, it'll run the older systems. All of them will run them well up to maybe Dreamcast. Uh, anything above that, like PSP or the N Nintendo DS, that's where you're going to see your differences between each system. So it's really up to you to kind of decide what you're willing to spend and which systems on the higher end that you're more interested in uh, playing. Uh, for me, I went with the most basic one, uh, mostly because it's been out for quite a while. And there's a system that I uh, uh, reviewed before, which uh, was like the teleportation magic box, wh whatever that was. I'll put a picture of it up here. Uh, that also ran on the S905. So I wasn't really going to splurge and get something that would be similar, especially since this was pretty pricey when it came out at first, which was about a couple years ago. Uh, since come down in price, and I figured I'd give it a shot in 2023 and see if it's something that would be worth it. I haven't even opened this yet or even played it yet, so this will be new uh, for me or for you if you're unfamiliar with it. So as far as the specs are concerned, um, as I said, it runs the S905 chip. It has a CPU running on uh, 1.5 gigahertz. It's a four-core, 64-bit. Uh, has a five core Mali 450 graphics processor, has 1080p HDMI output. Uh, it's running Emulec on it. Depending on where you read it, it says it runs 50 to 60 emulators on it. Uh, I'm not going to tell you everything that's on there because there's some pretty obscure stuff in there as well. But it does have Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, CPS 1, 2, and 3. Final Burn Alpha, Famicom, Super Famicom, N64, uh, Mega Drive, Sega Master System, PC Engine, or TurboGrafx-16, and the Super Graphics, I believe, is on as well. Uh, runs PS1, PSP, Dreamcast, Game Gear, Neo Geo, Atari 2600, 5200, 7800, 800, I believe, Amiga, Naomi, tons of them. Uh, we'll buzz through them real quick when we actually look at it. Um, I purchased this on AliExpress for $48.74. Um, I'm not going to sit there and tell you what other options are out there. Just Google it. I mean, they're selling these everywhere and anywhere. Uh, from Amazon to AliExpress, Banggood, you name it. Everything out there that sells any kind of game system from China is selling this one as well. Um, so just look again what uh, is best for you. This one says it has uh, 90,000 games on it, so you can get anything from 90,000 to 100 and some thousand. I just saw one that's like 117,000. Probably uh, there's going to be a lot of duplicates and hacks on it. Uh, they're basically all ROM dumps on here. You can add your own games to it via the uh, SD card and maybe try to organize it and cut stuff down if you're, you know, willing to invest your time in it. But without further ado, 
We're going to take a look at it, try to do it as quickly as possible. There's so much to unpack on this thing that uh, I don't want to make a video that's, you know, an hour long. So we will unbox this, take a look at it, try some games on it, and help decide whether or not you would be interested in adding this to your collection of Chinese knockoff emulator console things. Okay, here we have the box for the uh, Super Console X. Smoothly runs 80 plus emulators is what this says. Uh, again, I think a lot of that is uh, kind of bull crap, but nevertheless, this, this is the box. It's not too bad, shows you what comes in it. Uh, shows you the console. That's about that. It's a box. So let's open it up. What we have here. Uh, that probably contains the console. And here are the typical PlayStation 2 knockoff controllers that are relatively crappy. Be nicer to see uh, if uh, China starts producing some decent quality uh, controllers for once, but nevertheless, these are not it. Uh, they function. Uh, that's about the best I could say. Uh, really cheap, light plastic. We've reviewed this multiple times before. Uh, trigger buttons are okay. Analog sticks are usable. Runs on two AAA batteries, it looks like. But let's look at what comes in the box. We have a manual that's uh, pretty decent. Is the product information uh, shows you the uh, menus for the Emulec. Uh, looks like it goes into uh, pretty decent detail, but we won't look at it. Uh, comes with a USB hub for adding additional controllers to it with the two wireless controllers and some wired controllers. Uh, you could play up to five people on this system. That's not too bad. Uh, we have our power source, which uh, we have an HDMI cable. Uh, instructions on how to work the crappy gamepad. And here we are with the system itself. Let's take off this protector. And there you have it. It looks like a Super Famicom. This is a relatively uh, popular shell out there, it seems. Uh, but this is it. Nonetheless, these are dongles, I believe, for the uh, controllers. You have an audio video out, an Ethernet port, the HDMI out, your DC in for the power, and a power power button which is nice to have <clears throat> you can see that they have this ventilation down here on the bottom um there is no active fan on this thing so when you're playing the higher end systems like the dreamcast n64 and so on this is probably going to get a little warm so uh be warned about that i have heard how this runs a little bit hot but that being said that is our look at the console itself. Um, build quality is okay. It's a thicker plastic. Little rubber footers on the back. Not bad. But why don't we plug this in and try to speed through playing some games as quickly as possible and looking around the menu. And uh, let's have a look at it. All right, once you turn it on, you are greeted with this being the uh, main menu. Uh, which lists all of the uh, system that it plays. We'll scroll through it real quick. If you look down at the bottom, you can see uh, how many uh, games are on each system. This one says it has 3,742. So here we are, Super Nintendo. We have Super Nintendo Hacks, Super Graphics, uh, Turbo 16, Turbo Graphics 16. 
Vectrex, Virtual Boy, Wonder Swan, Wonder Swan Color, Sharp X68000, Sinclair, Sinclair ZX Spectrum, All Games Favorites, Amiga, Amstrad CPC, Atari 2600, 5200, 7800, 800, Atari Lynx, Atari ST, the Thomas Wave, Commodore 64, ColecoVision, Capcom 1, 2, Dreamcast, uh, NES, or Super Famicom. Uh, that would be Final Burn Alpha, Family Computer Disk System, Game & Watch, Game Gear, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Sega Genesis, Sega Genesis Hacks, and Television, Mains, Sega Master System, Sega Genesis, Mega Drive, MX2, MSX2, uh, Nintendo 64, Naomi, Nintendo DS, Neo Geo CD, Neo Geo, regular NES, the NES Hacks, Neo Geo Pocket, Neo Geo Pocket Color, Odyssey 2, Open Beats of Rage, Telegraphic 16, Telegraphic 16 CD, Pokemon Mini, Raspberry Pi Ports, PSP, PlayStation, Sega 32X, Sega CD, Sega SG-1000, and back to Super Nintendo. So this is the emulators that are on here. I believe there are a ton more if you have ROMs and load them up to the SD card. The SD card will list the emulators that are there. There's a lot you can do with this through Emulac as far as configuring the system, updating the firmware, all kinds of stuff. I'm not going to get into that. There's a lot of channels out there that do cover that. Um, so do your research. It's out there. Uh, I don't want to make this video too long. So without further ado, why don't we just very quickly go through some of the systems that are on here. Uh, highlight some of the higher end stuff because obviously the lower end stuff is going to play well on it. So let's just quick buzz through some of them. So real quick, we can take a peek at what you have in the main menu for uh, Emulec. You got your game settings, which are game ratio, video mode, smooth games, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, controller settings, which allows you to change the uh, input buttons, which uh, some of you might want to do uh, because some of the uh, buttons aren't mapped correctly. You can also pair a Bluetooth controller so that you do not have to use these crappy controllers that come with it. UI settings, game collection settings. Uh, really, there's a lot of stuff you can configure on this. Uh, sound settings. Uh, again, we're not going to go into it uh, in great detail, but here's where you can connect to the Wi-Fi. Updates and downloads. That's why you would want to connect. System settings, which is time zone, language, all that kind of stuff. Again, we're not going to get into it, but thought that you'd be interested that this kind of stuff is in here. And here's where you would also quit if you wanted to. This is also something very important. Um, when you want to shut down the system, just don't hit the power button and turn it off. Uh, you will go into the main menu down to quit, click that, and then shut down the system. And then you can power it off. So here we are looking at Jungle Hunt for the Atari 5200. 5200. If you look at the sides, this is what I like about it. They display it in the proper aspect ratio without you having to mess around with it. And then you have your bezels on the side of it that show you what system you're playing. Poop. So this is Dolphin Blue on a Thomas Wave. 
And as you can see, it looks good. Uh, seems to be running at a decent frame rate, but the audio is a little iffy on this. It is still playable, but nevertheless, be aware of that. Oops. Jesus. Audio seems a little bit iffy on it, but it's running. Figure out what they do. Ooh, that works. Oh, my God. 
So I think we pretty much got an idea of how the system runs. Uh, as you can tell, most of them run well, other than the higher end stuff, like I said, have some minor issues, but again, the games are more or less cherry picked. So why don't we finish up doing one of my uh, favorite systems of all time, which is the TurboGrafx-16. That was our look at the Super Console X game system. Uh, I wasn't surprised by what this thing could do because, as I said, I had already reviewed the Super Game Box or Teleportation Magic Box or X, whatever this thing also was. It goes by different names. Also runs on the S905 chip as this does. So I wasn't surprised as far as the capabilities were concerned. Uh, there's a lot you can do with this that's similar to this. Um, so if you don't have one of these game boxes that, uh, run on this chip and you want to get your start on something, this is actually pretty good to start on. Uh, this I think is actually sort of cheaper depending on where you look, if it's still out there. I don't really see too many of these out there anymore, but this is all over the place. Again, just shop around, get something that you would be, uh, interested in as far as, uh, price and power, I guess you could say. But um, that should do it for our review on this. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.